if there's one show that I always come back to, to revisit that nostalgia of being a kid, it has to be Clarence. I've raved about the show on numerous occasions, and y'all seem to love it for some reason, so without wasting any more of your time, let's get into The Tales of Marginia. The episode begins with this teacher, Miss Baker, reading a book to her class, and they show that all the students really couldn't care one bit about what she's reading. They're either fiddling with their desks, staring into space, or something else. This has to be one of the most relatable things I've seen in this show. This is exactly what being in any English lesson is like. However, this one kid, Percy, actually seems to be enjoying the book and is using these little paper puppets to visualize it for himself. But, unbeknownst to our heroes. Are the animals real? No, Percy, again, this is just a story. It's not real. Is he old enough to be in this class? There's a few things that I liked about the short clip right here that I want to point out. They'll be important later, trust me. First, Dawson's statement about Percy being very young. It's something the show has always implied, but I don't think has ever been said outright. And it makes a lot of sense looking at it in hindsight. His high-pitched voice, small stature, and general cluelessness, almost to Clarence levels, is a product of him being much younger than everyone else. It's not his fault that he's clueless, he's just doing and asking things because he's young and wants to learn about the world. So when he gets judged, you have to feel for him. Granted, if I were in that class, please believe I would have slapped the shit out of this kid. And I think that Clarence understanding this and making him feel better, whether it was intentional or not, helps in making the adventure these two have later in the episode feel that more realistic. Welcome to the legend of Animal Town. Look, I got us all these animals. I made us a little animal world, just like you were talking about in class. <laughs> nah, this kid is actually a gem, it's crazy. Clarence is easily just one of the most caring and kind characters in animation, and without him ever getting annoying or becoming a Mary Sue type character. I think what makes him very different is that a lot of kid characters, especially in the previous decade or so, have a lot of emphasis put on their more chaotic or negative attributes. But he's just genuinely a good intention person, and we need more people like him. Although maybe without the potential animal endangerment, him and Percy go around playing with the animals, just having a grand old time with a few jokes sprinkled here and there. Clarence has the idea of ordering pizza with some money his mom gave because he's more responsible than he's shown to be previous. It's not much, but it's a nice bit of development the writers gave him. The characters aren't explicitly shown to age in the show, but time definitely does pass, and as we'll see later, Clarence is far from the purely impulse-driven kid he used to be. But forget about that for a minute, because we have anthropomorphic animals to talk about next. <laughs> Still clutching to your fairy tales, old man. For Tholomew! Isn't it obvious why we're here? Hmm? We're here because the pink one locked us up! So, this episode decides to take what seems like a complete 180 and introduce the animals that Clarence collected as actual characters. I say that it seems like a complete 180 because Percy did ask in the beginning of the episode whether the animals were real or not. And here they are, real as ever. The animals have a very similar aesthetic to some Disney slash Don Bluth type characters, which makes sense. They're both just obsessed with those. They are treated as the B-plot of the episode for now, as their main motivation seems to be to escape the garage and get revenge from Clarence, or the pink one as they refer to him. The episode slowly builds this connection between Percy and the animals, as seen in this shot where we can clearly see him absolutely fascinated with the garage door, behind which the animals are kept in. Yeah? Oh come on. Oh sorry, this is such a mess, let me just try and eat that for you. <laughs> <laughs> this show can unintentionally be fucking hilarious. Percy, with his imagination running wild, decides to share the pizza with the animals, who are trying to escape. The thing that surprised me about this is that I actually got to feel for the animals here. Despite how basic or how little of the episode is actually their dialogue, I got a lot out of their interactions with each other, and I cared just as much about them as I did Clarence and Percy. To go character by character, and you're crazy if you think I'm gonna go back and get their names. We have this squirrel lady, whose main motivation is getting back to her sons and getting food for the winter. There's this old couple of beetles, who share a very similar dynamic to Eustace and Muriel from Courage the Cowardly Dog. A grumpy old man and a nice lady, who may not always agree, but do actually care for each other. The rest of them honestly aren't worth talking about, and just serve to act as a part of Percy's fantasy. And just like most fantasies made by the youth, it unfortunately falls into the pit of self-insertion. My children shan't go hungry this winter. You're my hero, Perseus. May I kiss your tail, Perseus? No! Keep dancing! Yeah, I will admit Percy's voice is a noise. The voice actor certainly did a good job. If his instruction was to sound like the male version of Chloe Carmichael. God, I'm still not over that. It makes sense to me why they did it though. It's to emphasize how young and immature he is, and how to others it may come off as annoying. He's still learning how society works and the things you can do and can't do, and this high-pitched energetic voice is just one of the ways that they show it. For any small kid of his age, this is really just time to experiment and be creative. Unfortunately for Clarence. Mm. Clarence, are you gonna kick out all the animals? No, 
out tonight. I'll just let them go in the morning. I really appreciate the use of silence in this scene. There aren't a lot of moments like this where Clarence has had to be the one to put someone in line. It's usually the other way around. But in this scenario, it's actually him who has to be the mature one. And the little things like getting him ready for bed and trying to explain what Percy did was wrong shows that Clarence understands that he has to be the grown-up. And like I said before, this does wonders for his development throughout the show. Not all episodic shows like Clarence will go the further step in just changing certain aspects of a character to emulate growth. Just because a show doesn't have an overarching story, unless is something where that would make sense. I don't really think Bugs Bunny needs much in the way of character development. Wait, they already did that? He's a Morlock! He's a jailer! He's not fun! This song sounds like it came straight out of a Disney movie, and I love it. From the animation, which became noticeably more smooth whenever the characters were on screen, pretty much paying homage to the films it's parody, and the character designs are absolutely fitting. And you can tell they did their research to truly capture that 1800s type feel with these characters. The song itself serves as a pretty good war cry. I think the bassy voices in the background were just what the song needed. The lyrics, while quite basic, served their purpose of summing up the feelings of the animals in Percy and hyping up this absolute battle for the ages. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> now listen, what were we really expecting, like realistically? Did you come up with all that yourself? Yes! Yes, I made it up! None of it's real, okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> well, do, do you think you could start over? <laughs> If you've watched my Belson's backpack review, you may remember me going on about this scene where Clarence helped Belson write his story, and this scene is pretty much more of the same thing, but with Percy instead. I'll keep my opinion here short, but I think Clarence is one of the most selfless characters I've ever seen, and it's why he naturally works as this kind of protagonist. Especially in his early days, he may have been loud, kind of annoying, and a bit clueless, but it was always made up for by his selflessness. He's just a naturally good-intentioned person who likes to see others succeed, even if they don't appreciate that. Like I said before, a a lot of kid characters focus on the more negative or chaotic aspects of the kid's psyche, and that's what separates this show from others. Even the less friendly characters have certain attributes that make you want to see them become better as the show goes on. So when Percy reads his book to the class but no one really cares, it doesn't really make a difference because it's the fact that he was able to partly live out his story and accept that he can't actually live them out is what matters. He's at least found a way to give himself some satisfaction. Speaking of things that are satisfying, <laughs> In conclusion, we have another goaded episode of Clarence here. I don't think I've spoken about this show negatively yet, and I doubt that'll be the case anytime soon. It tells the story of an immature kid just trying to live out his dreams. It had some pretty good animation, the references were on point, and as always, it had a pretty decent moral. I hope you enjoyed this video, click here to see another Clarence review, have a good day, and take care.